Hey guys, it's Sabrina, and today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in September. Now, you may notice that things are a little bit different. <laughs> that is because I have moved. I do not, I have not unpacked my books yet, so I can't film in front of my bookcases, and I haven't put up any decor. I'm in my dad's house, so that's why you have this ugly painting that I did once, um, and nothing else in the background. I will be fixing that soon, I promise. I am working my hardest at unpacking. It is very difficult. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about the books I read in September. September wasn't a great reading month, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't have too many books to talk about because some of these books were for a video that I did. But let's just let's just get into it and see how it goes, right? <laughs> That's the only thing we can do. Okay, so the first book that I read in September was I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. This book follows our main character who's essentially stalking a girl on the internet who's sleeping with the same man that she is. Our main character is in love with this man and she wants to date him really, really bad. He is married and he also is sleeping with a bunch of other women. But she becomes obsessed with this one who has a large Instagram following and is very wealthy. That's kind of it for the plot. Like, there's not much going on here that's really the essence of it. But I will say I did like it. I heard this one is pretty polarizing. Some people really hate it. Some people really love it. I'm probably not in either camp. I'm somewhere in the middle. I gave this book 3.5 stars. I thought it was really interesting. I spent the whole time I was reading the book trying to come up with like the right word to describe the writing style. Like brutal, raw, both kind of fit, but don't describe exactly how this writing style works. But I did like it. I found it to be very compelling. I also found this book personally to be very hurtful. Like... So the character's making these awful decisions. For instance, she already has a boyfriend. And instead of breaking up with him to pursue this other man, she's still with him as she's seeing this other guy. And she's just treating her boyfriend like shit. So she's making awful decisions, doing things I would never do in my entire life. And just being like a bad person for the most part. But I think at the end of the day, most of us can really relate to really wanting someone who doesn't want us back. And God, that feeling hurts. Like, I was reading this and I felt like it was giving me war flashbacks. It was kind of hard. And lastly, I will say, I read some Goodreads reviews and some of them were saying that this book would be better without the politics. And I kind of agree, which is crazy for me to say because I love politics. Like, I was a poli-sci major. I want to work in policy. I love that shit, right? I love it in books, too. But sometimes not all the time like there were some politics in here that I thought were relevant especially when I was talking about like race because our main character is Indian I believe and the woman that she's obsessed with is white and there's some dynamics with that and the man that she's interested in is also white so I thought that stuff was relevant but there's some other stuff in here where just kind of felt like it took you away from the book like this book is about her obsession and it's like such a narrow concentration on this man that sometimes when she was going into these longer tangents about politics it just felt like it was a little bit off topic and I feel like this book would have been a bit like neater if it was only focused on the main subject so I think it took away from the premise somewhat but I still really liked this this will be like staying in my collection I might read it again again 3.5 stars the next book I picked up, and the favorite book that I read this month, which is a spoiler, <laughs> is A Father's Story by Lionel Dahmer. Yes, this is Jeffrey Dahmer's father. I found this book in like a true crime museum in Savannah, Georgia when I was on vacation. And I saw it and I knew I needed it. And I knew I needed to read it as soon as possible. So I did. <laughs> so essentially, this book is following Jeffrey Dahmer's father's thoughts on what his son did like he goes through his son's life from when he was like a baby to a child teenager adult I guess I didn't need to say all of that because that's what a life is but he's really like thoroughly thinking about why his son turned out that way and if there was anything that he could have done to stop it and the ways that like he related to his son not in the sense that he was like a serial killer as well but in the sense of like he was also like a lonely kind of shy guy growing up and so he saw that in his son and he's kind of talking about like all these red flags that he may have missed and he's really just like reckoning with his son what his son has done but he still has love for his son which is oh it's heartbreaking. It's like, God, 
Okay, I need to get a little bit more coherent before I continue with this review because I feel like I'm just ranting now. In general, though, I just could not put this book down. Like, Dahmer actually wrote surprisingly well. I found this really accessible and, like, decently written, which you don't always get with, like, a memoir or nonfiction. Especially, I wasn't expecting it here because I was just expecting this book to be famous because of the subject matter. But it is surprisingly well written. And it was just so compelling. Like, maybe it's only compelling to me because I'm, like, morbidly curious about stuff like this. But I highly recommend this. I mean, my favorite parts... I hate using the word favorite. The parts that I found to be most compelling um, were the instances where his father, like, almost found out what his son was up to. Like... Jeffrey was living with his grandmother for a while and his grandmother was complaining about like terrible smells emanating from the garage and basement and those terrible smells were because he was keeping dead bodies there and his dad flew to where his like grand his mother and his son were living and he was like talking to Jeffrey about it and he was like what the fuck are you doing like where are these smells coming from and Jeffrey was like coming up with all these excuses And then finally he told his dad that he was finding like roadkill on the side of the road and like experimenting with it, which granted is weird and kind of should have been a red flag, but his dad was also like a scientist. So I guess he could kind of, he was playing on that, the sense that like his father's also interested in science and experiments and stuff. I don't know. I'm not going to make up any justifications for it. Um, But the most compelling part of the book is... I don't consider this a spoiler either because this is like what Jeffrey Dahmer was doing. But if you don't want to know any details, I will put this book down once I'm done talking about this specific part. So the most compelling part of the book for me, again, was a moment where his father almost found out what he was doing. So there's another scene where like he's a scene. This was a real life thing that happened. There's another part of the book where his father, again, is at his mother's house where his son is living and he's going through Jeffrey's closet and they found like they found some weird shit in his closet all right there's like a human mannequin in there there's like a guy that was freaking his grandma out they also found like he found some porno mags in there which he was like talking to Jeffrey about how like this makes your grandma un- uncomfortable to have in the house you need to get rid of them and then he comes across a box and he the box is locked and he's telling Jeffrey to open it and Jeffrey is refusing to open it like getting really worked up about how he has no privacy and like yelling at his dad and his dad is like I'm gonna go get some fucking tools I'm gonna open this box like what are you hiding in here and Jeffrey like takes a check that his father had given him and like tears it up and is like I'll open for you I'll open it for you tomorrow I promise and for some reason his dad relents and his dad later finds out there's a human head in that box like what the fuck Oh, I'm going to put it down now so people know I'm no longer spoiling it. I just, I'm obsessed with this book. I, I just like don't know who wouldn't be interested in this. That's how interesting I find it. And at the same time as it was so compelling, it was also just so sad because I think we talk a lot. I don't even think that. (laughs) So maybe I shouldn't word it like that. I think we do talk about victims and how sad it is for the victims' families. I do think we should talk about victims more because kind of like these serial killers become these big names and yada, yada, yada. Um, So the victims definitely deserve more notoriety, I guess. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean? But certainly everyone can understand like having sympathy for the victims' families and what they went through, like finding out that their loved one was killed and killed in such a grotesque way. But you don't often think about the families of the serial killer because they've also lost someone in the same way. Like, granted, Jeffrey, like, died in prison many years later. So his dad hadn't necessarily, like, lost him um, in the sense of death. But, like, he lost who he thought his son was. He lost... Oh, God, I don't know. Like, he loved his son. And it shows throughout the book. Like, he talks about... Oh, my God, I gotta read you this one line. Where is it? I gotta find it. It's gonna be crazy if I can't find this. Because it was such a good line. Okay. Here it is. This is an example of, like, how he's talking about that love he has for his son. But then still trying to reckon with what his son did. So, in this part of the book, he's talking about Jeffrey as a baby. And he says... I often think of him in that initial innocence. I imagine the shapes he must have seen, the blur of moving colors, and as I recall him in his infancy, I feel overwhelmed by a sense of helpless dread. I consider his eyes blinking softly. 
God damn it. I consider his eyes blinking softly, and then I remember all the horrors they will later see. I dwell on the small pink hands, and in my mind I watch them grow larger and darker as I think about all that they were little do, of how stained they were become with the blood of others. Oh my god. Like, that is so heavy. I can't imagine having that feeling. Like, having all these joyous memories of, like, your beloved son, and then on top of that, the knowledge of the awful, terrible things he did. God. I can't. Look, I could talk, I could rant about this book for ages, I think, but I'm not going to. I will say, I think that if you're slightly interested in this or could find yourself interested in the subject, I think it's a must read. Trigger warnings for everything Jeffrey Dahmer did, which is like terrible, awful, disgusting things, monstrous things, obviously. But God, God, this book is going to stick with me for a very long time. I gave it five stars. And then after that, I read some books for a vlog that I did reading Cozy Fantasy. So for these four books, are there four? Yes, there's four. I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis and then move on. You can watch that video if you'd like. So yeah, the first book I read for that video is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book takes place in a world where there are fairies and it's following our main character, Emily Wilde, who's a professor at some English university that whose name I cannot remember. I think it's Cambridge. And she studies fairies. So she is about to complete her encyclopedia on every type of fairy that there is, but she has one more type of fairy that she needs to study. So she goes to this place that resembles Scandinavia and she's trying to study these fairies, but she's having a rough time because she kind of like got off on the wrong foot with the locals. And then one of her associates at the college, whose name, what's his name? Wendell. He shows up and she's upset because she thinks he's going to try to take credit for her research. And she also, though, thinks that he might be a fairy. And then things go on from there. Then I picked up Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This book follows her main character who was once a mercenary, but she's given up on that life. She's also an orc. Um, She's given up on that life and she wants to start a coffee shop. So it follows her as she goes to the city, finds a place to set up the coffee shop, gets the coffee in, finds someone to work there, finds someone to bake goods for the coffee shop. It's a very cozy fantasy. Then I read The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This book, whew, I got a lot of feelings about this book, but I'm going to hold them in because if you want to know them, you got to watch that video. Essentially, this book follows our main character, Linus, who works for the Department of Ch- in Charge of Magical Youth. So in this world, there are like magical people, um, but the children have to stay in these orphanages, except they're not really orphanages because no one ever adopts them. But these children are in danger because most regular people are afraid of magical people and like try to kill them and stuff. So he works as a caseworker for these orphanages and he'll go and he will like determine whether they should stay open basically. And he one day gets called in to the head of this department with a very secret project. So he has to go to this island where the children are uniquely dangerous and just very unique in general. And he it's like this special project that he has to work on to see if the caretaker there is fit and if the children are safe and if the orphanages should stay open. So that's that. Then lastly, for that video, I read... Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. This book most of you will probably be familiar with based off of the movie, but essentially it follows our main character, Sophie, who works in a hat shop, her family hat shop, and then one day her father dies and her stepmother basically, like, gets rid of her other two sisters and gives them to apprentices, like, to be apprentices because she can't afford to keep them anymore, but she does keep Sophie uh, employed at the hat shop. And then one day a woman comes in and is asking Sophie for hats and she kind of talks back to her. Sophie does. And then it turns out that it's a witch and the witch curses her to be like an old lady. So she decides to flee and she's going like into the waste and then she sees Howl's moving castle and Hal is like a known wizard and she's old and she's tired and she's cold. So she enters the castle and that's where things start off from there. So those were the four books I read for that video. And then the very last book that I read in September was The Wall by Marlene Haushofer. I'm sorry, I can't say that last name. I don't know any German. So this book follows our main character whose name we never find out, which is why I can't remember it. 
and essentially she's vacationing like in the mountains with her family one day and her family like leaves to go into town and then she wakes up the next day and they're still not back so she starts to walk around she notices that no one's there and then she realizes that an invisible wall has come up between her and the rest of civilization and it's essentially a story of survival where she's left behind with a cow a cat and a dog and she has to figure out how to survive cut off from humanity and with no humanity left because she can see that people have just basically turned into stone so it's basically a survival story this is technically sci-fi because of the premise of the book but the bulk of the book is just the story of this woman trying to survive so there's a lot of like long passages about how like she doesn't know how to tell if a cow is pregnant and like of her planting potatoes and like just doing like manual labor to try to survive and that's the bulk of the book i wouldn't say it was boring because i like i was always at least a little bit interested and i was able to get through it but it did get pretty monotonous to be honest and it just wasn't the book that was like calling to me to keep me picking it up i it took me a few days to get through this one and i was like kind of forcing myself to pick it up even though like i was finding it interesting when i was reading it i did like it at the end of the day but i wouldn't really say it's a must read for anyone unless this type of story is like really your jam and i gave this book three stars so there you go let me see if i can pick them up can you see these this is an awful way to hold them these are the books that i read in september let me know if you've read any of these books down below give me your thoughts tell me what i should read next and I will see you soon with another video. Goodbye.